Hey guys, how are you doing? Dr. Nathan Thompson here with Exemplify Health Center, your Wellness Way affiliate, Yorkville, Illinois. Hope you guys are having a great evening. Hope you guys had a great uh, weekend as well. Uh, yes, it's almost eight o'clock. I'm still uh, at the office. It's been a super, super long day. We saw lots of patients today. Um, but I wanted to go over some interesting things. Uh, we looked at some uh, lab testing uh, today with a young boy who suffers with terrible allergies and also ADHD. And I want to give you a little bit of a different perspective uh, on how we look at things like ADHD from a different approach, from a different perspective. Remember, all we do is we look at things differently. We look at it the Swiss watch. It's never take this for that, high blood pressure, take this. ADHD, take Ritalin or take Adderall. Um, if you have depression, take this. The body works like a Swiss watch. And so changes in neurochemicals, changes in neurotransmitters are really more of a response to something happening somewhere else in the body. I want you guys to remember this, is that a lot of the issues that you have when it comes to your hormones, when it comes to your neurochemicals, um, when it comes to so many different things, are really just a response to something that's irritating the immune system or something that is really a result of some kind of chronic stressor, whether it's mental or whether it's even a physical stressor um, on the brain stem, on the brain, or on the spinal cord. Guys, this is so important that you actually you know, start looking at it from a different perspective. So the question that I have is, is, is ADHD really just something that involves the immune system and I'm gonna show you when we look at this, why I believe, why my opinion is, is that yes, it really is something that is happening in the immune system. So I want you to stay with me. I don't have a lot of time, so I wanna explain this to you as, as quickly as possible. The reason why I have all this backwards uh, is because I'm gonna flip the camera around and sorry for the poor production, but I don't have time to set everything up. But I'm gonna show you this, uh, this individual suffering terribly with um, ADHD. And just remember this, guys, when you go and your child gets the diagnosis of ADHD, remember this, or ADD, remember this. It, the diagnosis is based on a set of symptoms. It is not based on blood work. It is not based on any kind of objective testing. They call it objective based on a, you know, some kind of standard series of questions. And hey, if you answer these in the affirmative, well, I guess your child has ADHD. So the question is, is are they really measuring uh, neurochemicals? This is the same with depression. Not to say that people aren't depressed, but is there any objective testing to actually prove that a person is in fact depressed. There's so many different variables to play, physical, mental, chemical, physical, mental, chemical. So I wanna show you um, some lab testing that we did on this individual that explains why this person would have symptoms of ADHD, inattention, you know, problems with anxiety and things like that. And I'm gonna show you all we have to do is look at the neurochemicals and trace it back, okay? Um, trace it back to, sorry, I'm just getting a call. Trace it back to where that neurotransmitter is actually coming from, okay? Or the specific neurochemical. I'm gonna flip the camera around, so just bear with me as I try to make sure that we can see everything that we need to see, okay? All right, now watch. So if you look at this individual, what we measured is we measured what is known as urinary inhibitory neurotransmitters, urinary excitatory neurotransmitters. Uh, there's some other things that we measure, urinary creatinine, things like that. So when you look at this, one of the big things that you see is you see elevated glycine, elevated GABA, gamma aminobutyric acid. It's actually inhibitory neurotransmitters. So you think, oh, ADHD, he's got the ability to be able to inhibit certain brain functions, but that's a, that's a result, that's not necessarily a cause. If you keep looking down, here's what jumps out at me, is that in this individual, you look at histamine and histidine, uh, which are precursors to histamines, and you can see how elevated these histamines actually are. Wow, look at, you can even see uh, specific dopamine neurotransmitter, or, you know, precursors, um, how elevated those are as well. When you look at this, all you have to do, guys, okay, let me switch this around. All you have to do is, especially when you are seeing, and I, this is what I see clinically, is when you see someone who's got high histamines, a high histamine response, 
look at where these histamines are actually discharged. They are discharged from specific immune system cells, okay? Now, I want you to think of this. Guys, if we make this connection, you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, I've never thought of this before. So I want you to think, because uh, I was someone who struggled mightily with allergies when I was growing up, and I remember that I would be given, when I had allergies, runny nose, uh, you know, watery eyes, uh, just felt like kind of feverish, had a headache. And I remember I would take an antihistamine. So they would give you an antihistamine like Benadryl. And the reason why is that it blocks the effects of histamine or histamine uptake, okay? Now, if you look in the warning label of an antihistamine, here's where it gets really interesting, is on an antihistamine, they say, they have a warning on it, and the warning is, do not operate you know, heavy machinery while on this medication because it has the effect of making you drowsy. Think antihistamines and drowsy. Now, this individual has literally such high histamine and histidine, I want you to think of it. If antihistamines will depress brain activity, wouldn't it be safe to assume that an increase in histamines will increase brain activity, okay? So they increase brain activity, and it's no wonder with the flooding of these histamines, it's no wonder that this poor child's brain is always on fire, okay? Now, where is histamine made? It's made from the immune system, okay? It's made uh, in response to some different forms of immune reactions that are taking place. So this is why when you look at this and you see how high this is, I'm saying this is an immune system issue. This is an immune system issue. This child doesn't have a broken brain. This child wasn't born with ADHD. This child is not broken. This child's immune system is being assaulted. And it's no wonder they can't calm down the brain because the, their, their brain is always on fire because of these histamines. Antihistamines will depress the brain. Increased histamines will excite the brain, okay? Now watch, this is what I have a passion for. Because when they are giving kids uh, Ritalin indiscriminately, indiscriminately, guys, you guys have to understand, if you get pulled over without a prescription and you have Ritalin in your possession, they can um, charge you <laughs> with drug possession, um, no different in the same drug uh, category as cocaine. You guys understand that? It's an amphetamine, okay? Now, even Adderall, guys, if you don't even uh, understand Adderall, all day time released Ritalin is basically what it is. Go back to, I think it's about 2004, 2005, 2006. They, in Canada, they put a major warning. They might have even taken it off the market because it was causing an increase in cerebrovascular accidents, okay? It was causing an increased strokes in children, okay? Now in Canada, and I figured out and extrapolated that, it was like it came out to literally the possibility of 40,000 kids having some kind of cerebrovascular accident from being on Adderall, which in my opinion is absolutely criminal. Did you guys hear this on the news? You never ever heard it on the news. You never heard about Biox, you never heard of it. I know you, you might have heard about Shantix, which is you know a medication they just decided to pull off the market 15 years after they cleared it as being safe and effective. So this child's immune system is being irritated. So this is so true when it comes to you're doing some kind of neurotransmitter um, uh, test, is trace it back to where the neurotransmitter is made. Trace it back to where the neurotransmitter is made. There's an issue with anxiety, trace it back to where the neurotransmitter is made. If there's an issue with depression, uh, trace it back to where that neurotransmitter is made. Most of the neurotransmitters are made in, in regards to serotonin is in the gastrointestinal system. This is why when people have problems with anxiety, trace it back to gastrointestinal inflammation. Trace it back to uh, some kind of GI issue, especially long-term, when a person is suffering with depression. Am I saying it's the only reason why? No, because it can be to mental traumas. It can be to physical traumas, but it also you gotta make sure that you are looking at all three. You gotta start treating the person as a whole person. Getting back to this you know, individual, immune system, immune system, immune system. Something is irritating the immune system. So here's what we did. Now watch. I want to show you this because this is going to uh, absolutely amaze you, okay? So we did what is known as an IgG and an IgE food allergy test. So we measure IgE. IgE is things like anaphylaxis. So think of literally like someone needing an EpiPen. 
So when we did his IgEs, here's what we found. IgE reactions to soy, IgE reactions to corn, IgE reactions to peanuts, to shrimp, and to wheat. So I want you to think about it. This child was eating, uh, was eating hydrogenated soybean oil. This person was eating um, you know, corn, tortilla chips. Uh, how about uh, vegetable oil as far, as far as corn oil? How about peanuts, peanut butter, or things with peanuts in it? How about shrimp and how about wheat? Is this child eating bread every single day? Are they eating pasta? Are they eating spaghetti? Are they eating those things? Now that is what will cause a discharge of histamines. Every time he was eating these foods that was part of his normal diet, he was irritating and insulting the immune system and it's no wonder his brain cannot settle down. Now watch this. Not only that, but we measured the food allergies. Your doctors don't like to measure, which is considered your IgG. This is more of a long-term delayed response. This is associated with things like uh, loose stool, diarrhea. I want you to think when you see this going on. Now he's got 34 different food allergies. That is a lot. His immune system is on fire, but why does he have 34 different food allergies, including to eggs? including things that you would think were actually healthy, you know, like tomatoes. Look at his, how he's reacting to shrimp. Look how he's reacting to safflower oil. Look how he's reacting to lobster. Look how he's reacting to cod and major proteins, not, absorb, or not breaking down his proteins. Chicken, the same thing. So when you look at that, he's reacting to literally so many different foods. And when a child has 34 different food allergies, the first thing that I see is I see um, gastrointestinal hyperpermeability, aka leaky gut, what no doctor says, oh, it doesn't exist, it doesn't exist. But remember, this is an immune response to proteins that have bypassed the gastrointestinal barrier, that that protein then is looked at as an antigen and the immune system says, uh-uh, you don't belong here and we need to have an inflammatory reaction to this. This is why we test IgGs. This is why we test IgEs. This is why we do not do all of these little tests that you get off of Facebook because they are not valid, they are not accurate because you need to make sure that you are testing all four IgG responses in order for it to be a true allergy. So this little poor little child, IgEs that he's getting exposed to every single day, the foods that he is eating, He's stressed out, and that's why you see some dopamine that's increased. He's always in fight or flight because there's an assault on his immune system, which is why now he has actually some allergies to things like chicken, some uh, allergies to cod, because those things need your stomach. You need uh, stomach acid <laughs> to be able to break down those proteins. And if you are in fight or flight, you don't have enough stomach acid. If you don't have enough stomach acid, you can't break down your heavy proteins. You also need stomach acid to be able to absorb iron and B12, which is why we just saw someone as well today who was massively anemic, even though they were consuming enough red meat because they didn't have enough stomach acid to be able to absorb those things. Guys, this is why all of this works together, okay? Now, if this child would have had reflux, they would have probably put them on some kind of, you know, uh, reflux medication, proton pump inhibitor. But you guys gotta start understanding that everything works together. So this poor kid now also has you know, gastrointestinal hyperpermeability, AKA leaky gut, which is used way too much, but everything that he eats is leaking through. And this poor little boy is so inflamed, his immune system's on fire. And the result, the result is his brain. Guys, things that happen in the brain is a result of what's happening in the body. So this little child has hope. Uh, start doing the right things, help him start breaking down his food, start avoiding those foods, start doing things in order to help seal up the, the gastrointestinal system and take down the inflammation and create, uh, stop creating an inflammatory response around the gastrointestinal system and within the blood supply. I know you're gonna ask this question. Well, why on earth would he have so many IgE reactions? I have my theories about that and it has to do with things that medical procedures that we do that contain certain proteins that bypass the barriers and are put directly into the blood. I'll let you go from there as far as what I'm actually talking about. But just remember this, how, ma how many IgE um, food allergies do we see now over the last 40 years? Because when I was growing up, we didn't see egg allergies. We didn't have peanut allergies, but now it seems that you have in every single classroom of 25, you have 
three, four, five of these kids who are having things like egg allergies, peanut allergies, uh, severe wheat allergies, and things like that. So just think, what are we doing that is hyper-stimulating our children's immune system that is then causing uh, a, a downstream reaction into the brain, and we're diagnosing them as ADD, ADHD, and we're putting them on me medication for the rest of their life without any kind of exit strategy. It's sad, but hopefully, guys, you understand this is the perspective that we come from from the wellness way. This is a perspective. Remember, we see things differently. Watch. What is this? You'll say, well, it's a square. And I said, well, what if you look at it from this way? Then it's no longer a square. It's looking at things from a different perspective. Hopefully, guys, that makes sense. If you like this video, make sure that you share. Uh, make sure that you say hello where you're watching from as well. Canada, how are you doing? We're thinking about you. We're praying for you. Um, so make sure that you share this video. Guys, as well, please support my cause. If you haven't seen it, we are going to be going full out uh, because of what's happening in today's atmosphere with mandates. So my new mandate is that we're going to mandate burpees. Okay, Burpees suck. If you know what burpees are, they absolutely suck. But at least doing that will do at least something for your health. Remember, obesity is a major major influencer in how, uh, you know, basically the strength of your immune system. And they know the more you're overweight, the more sluggish you have a specific immune system responses. And it's not necessarily the weight, it's what you do in order to create the weight. That's what can devastate the immune system as well. So support my cause. We have a link down there that says mandate burpees. It's a mandate burpees t-shirt. It's kind of a play on what's going on with government. If we can mandate all this other stuff, then we should be able to mandate something that would benefit people um, in, the long, in the long haul. And no one is going to get hurt from getting in a little better fitness and losing some weight. So make sure, guys, if you can, if you love our videos, please support our cause Mandate Burpees. We have an awesome t-shirt that's available. All you got to do is order it by October 17th. And if you do that after October 17th, the company's gonna print it and then they will mail it directly to you. If you're from a different country, I can't guarantee you that they can. Canada, maybe. Australia, I doubt it. Uh, New Zealand, I doubt it. Uh, some of the other awesome countries where people watch from, I'm not for sure. Go ahead and just put your address in and they'll probably tell you if they can ship it to you or not. So guys, uh, we're gonna be going live in November with probably 15, 20,000 people for our Mandate Burpee Challenge. Stay tuned. Uh, we'll be talking to you guys uh, about that coming up. Um, but if you guys see some pictures on my other uh, page, Dr. Nathan Thompson, you'll see me wearing the Mandate Burpees t-shirt, all right? So guys, support our cause and let's fight for what is right. Let's fight for our children. Let's fight for the, dis the, the ability to be able to choose what is right for our children. Let's stop drugging our kids and let's start looking for, for solutions. If you agree with that, please give me an amen and please support our cause, guys. All right, be well. I got to uh, head off. It's past 8 o'clock now. So uh, be well, guys. I love you all. I appreciate you all. And uh, let's get to work and change the healthcare, all right? Be well.